Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. In today's video, I am going to talk about typecasting or type conversion in C Sharp and .NET Framework. I am going to use .NET 6 for this example, but the same is true for earlier versions of .NET as well, except some syntactical changes as well as some extra features which are available in newer version compared to the older version. Now, what is typecasting or type conversion? Every variable that we declare has a type. We cannot declare a variable without type. For example, if I have want to declare an integer, I'm going to say int and I can say quantity, for example. So now, once we declare this variable, we cannot change the type randomly. It need to be conversion. There has to be a conversion of the type. For example, I cannot just go ahead and say quantity is equal to test. It is going to give me a compile time error itself. So as you can see here, it says cannot implicitly convert type string into int. So what is implicit conversion? So when it comes to type conversion, there are two types of conversion. One is implicit type conversion and one is explicit type conversion. Implicit type conversion is a type conversion when two compatible types, again as I mentioned, the type conversion is possible only between two compatible types. So implicit type conversion is a conversion when two compatible types can be converted from each other without any data loss. So for example, if we define integer and if we define, let's say long here, If we define integer quantity is equal to 10, we can very easily say quantity one is equal to quantity and we are not going to get any error. And this is the case of implicit conversion. It's because integer is a lower type because it's a 32 bit integer number, whereas long is 64 bit integer number. So when we assign quantity to quantity one, we are basically assigning 32 bit into a 62 bit, which means we are not going to lose any data. So this kind of conversion is known as implicit conversion. And this is here, we are not even doing any typecasting. We're just converting through implicit conversion. Usually built-in numeric types are a classic example of implicit type conversion. There's a lot of time we do it without even knowing. But apart from the building numeric data types, we can also have classes with implicit data type. For that, let me first explain the class hierarchy I created here. So here I have a class called user. The user has a name, email, age, and access, the type of access the user has. And it's a virtual member, and it returns a default value of none for the user class. And the access is an enum, which is none, admin, and manager. And then we have a class called admin, which derives from user, and it just overrides the access here. Now, at this point in time, if we, if we define admin is equal to new admin. And now if we declare a class called user, user, we can assign user to admin and it is going to work fine because here it is going to have an implicit conversion. The admin, which is a derived type, can be implicitly converted into user because user is the base type. 
and admin is the derived type. So here we are having implicit conversion. Next, we're going to talk about explicit conversion. Now explicit conversion also need to happen between two compatible types. But during explicit conversion, we might have loss of data. For example, let's say we have a double value. Okay, and let's say double price is equal to one, two, three, point four, five. That's the value. Now what we can do is we can define an integer price one and we can cast. Now we are doing a type casting. We're casting the double price into integer. Now once we do that, this is not going to throw any error because we are explicitly typecasting and these two both are numeric types so they can be converted from one to another because they are compatible. But at this point when we convert a double number to an integer, we're going to lose the decimal points and we're going to have only one, two, three. So if we here at this point, if we do a console dot right line of price one, and then if we run this application, we are going to see just one, two, three, and everything after the decimal point will be truncated because integer does not support decimal values. So if we see the output here, you can see it is only one, two, three. So this is how explicit typecasting works. And we can do explicit typecasting with custom types also. For example, if we define this, we already defined this admin. And then what we can do is we can, let me just copy paste it. So we have admin and then we can have user user is equal to user user is equal to admin. After that, what we can do is we can do admin one admin admin one is equal to and at this point we can typecast the user back into admin because anyway the user type was doing just a reference to admin type. So now if we do admin one, we can always explicitly typecast user into admin and assign it to admin one. So this is an explicit conversion using typecasting for custom types. So these are the two main type of conversion of type. One is implicit conversion and one is ex explicit conversion. Now, when we do conversion, if the conversion is unsuccessful, during runtime, we might get type conversion exception. So for example, here in the user, if we define another class, manager, which which derives from users and for the access right here, we can say manager's access is manager. And here what we do is we say manager, manager is equal to manager of user we can do this because user is the base type, but user is pointing to admin and their admin and manager are at the same level. So right at this point in time, if we run this application, you can see we're getting an error here. It says invalid cast exception because we are casting a type into another type which is not valid. So at this point in time, what we can do is, we can do like this. And this is very important feature. So we can say, if 
user which is the user object we defined up top so if we say what we want to do is we want to find out before we do a casting we want to find out if user is convertible to manager so we can say if user is manager then then manager is equal to manager of user now if we run this and if we put a breakpoint here it is not going to get inside the if block so let's run this application now and here if we do f10 you will see that it comes out without any error it's because there is no there is no man, user is not a manager now if we want to if we want our uh, f10 to work i just going to put a line here so that i can do an f10 and show you it's going to the next line so if i do an f10 you can see it did not go inside whereas if we say if user is an admin then convert convert user to admin I'm not changing the name I'm keeping the name as manager because I already defined a name admin and admin one so let's keep the name as manager but as you can see now if I run this application it is going to go inside this if condition and it is going to execute this statement so let's run this application and now if i do an f10 it is going to get inside this now the other thing also we can do is for type conversion we can do we can say manager manager is equal to user as manager now this is a very interesting scenario let me put a breakpoint and show you so when we use instead of doing a casting with the bracket if we do as if the casting is unsuccessful then the manager object will remain as null so here what we can do then if manager as manager and here we can say if manager is not equal to null then do something and for that we can uh, say console dot write line and inside of the right line we can just say write the name of the manager so that's something we can do so this is another way of doing casting using the s keyword which is going to convert if it is really that type otherwise it's going to throw it is going to return a null so if i run this application now it is not going to print the name of the manager which is empty anyway so if we if we set here user dot name is equal to test for example and if we run this still it's not going to print anything because it's not going to be successful but if we say admin user as admin and now if we run this this point in time the conversion will be successful so manager is not going to be null and it is going to print test as a name and this is what we were expecting anyway apart from this the other way or other pretty neat feature which is available in dotnet is using type during switch so for example if we have a switch case statement we can use type for figuring out so we can do switch 
and we can say for example user case admin console dot write line user dot name case manager console console dot write line user dot age and then break and we can have a default and for the default case let's just break out and uh, nothing else so as you can see we can use switch case statement also and in case of switch case statement we can use situation like this where we can say if the user is admin then print name if it is manager age otherwise don't do anything so if we run this application now it should print the name twice once for the first statement here where we are doing console dot write line of manager dot name then it did a plain console dot write line here and then it printed the name again here as a part of this switch case statement so this is a very basic introduction of type conversion and this is how you can use type conversion in c sharp and .NET framework and that is all i wanted to cover for today's video if you like this video please give me a thumbs up and if you are new to my channel if you think you are getting value out of my channel please subscribe to my channel and thanks so much for watching this video